Stay stand by, stay where you're at, stay where you're at. Still one more contact on him. Oh shit, fuck. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for hopping onto the vid, appreciate it. I'm Whiskey, and you've got Kalapo, the man behind the cam, who's going to be walking you guys through how we're treating casualties. This is meant to be essentially a combat lifesaver video, so you're going to learn what to do with the casualty uh, to stabilize them and treat them before a medic can get there. The reason we're remaking this video is because we switched from CAT Medical to ACM, which is Advanced Combat Medicine. The big differences are really only for the medics. In terms of what you guys are going to be doing on the ground, it's going to be very similar. There's just going to be some new words, but they all essentially mean the same thing. And we'll go through all that here in a minute. So yeah, don't be scared. It's going to be fine. And let's get into it. So the first thing I want to cover is the medical UI. You're going to notice that it's still the ACE medical UI, so nothing's really changed here. But you're going to have some different items in your inventory when you load into missions and that type of stuff. So let's go ahead and spawn a patient here just so we can get a look at the UI. So this one's going to be pretty, pretty easy here. Let's do this. All right. So as soon as we take a look at this guy, you're going to see that some areas of his body parts white, like his torso and his left arm. And some parts are uh, different colors of yellow and or red, right? Uh, and this is all a sliding scale. So if we're talking about people who, that are bleeding a lot, they're going to be more red. And people that are only bleeding a little, they're going to be more yellow. And how it shows up in the intermediate is that it's like orange. So if you look at his head and his left leg, uh, you'll see that those are darker shades compared to his right arm. And that's just because his right arm isn't bleeding as much as his head and left leg. So that's part that part of the UI. Uh, the other part that I want to show you is uh, there's a marking up here that's called chronic trauma when you get onto when you click onto like his head or even his right arm and his uh, left leg. Any trauma marking isn't really important. It's not something I want you guys to worry about. It's just an indication of how damaged the limb is, but that's not a concern for you guys. So no need to worry about that. The next thing I want to cover here is the UI in the top left. So this examine and treatment tab. Starting on the far left, uh, that view triage card, that is really just going to be a summary of everything that they've gotten during their treatment, right? The examine patient tab is going to essentially uh, give you guys an idea of their responsiveness, their pulse, their dog tag, stuff like that. The real thing that I want you guys to focus on here is this feel pulse option. So go ahead and click on this guy's head and then click feel pulse. And you'll see that there is a little heart that's pulsing. So this guy's got a very weak heart rate because that heart is very small and it's also pretty quick. Now, if there's no heart rate, which we'll be able to show you guys here in a minute, you're going to see that that heart rate essentially goes away. So yeah, there's that. I will circle back to that here in a little bit once this guy has gone into a full cardiac arrest. Moving to the left on the uh, on the tab, the next option you'll see is bandage and fractures. So the emergency trauma dressing is your gold standard for your head and your torso, because this means that you uh, this bandage can bandage essentially five wounds at once, which is really really good, and it can uh, close up a wound very quickly. Now for your limb injuries, your tourniquet is still going to be your best option for riflemen. If you see a limb bleeding, I want you to tourniquet that thing as soon as you see it, as soon as you see it bleeding. And that's really going to be our first step in stopping massive bleeding always, is just tourniquet, tourniquet, tourniquet. And then we can move on to, you know, using the emergency trauma dressings for the, for the head and chest. Now, pressure bandages are really good if you have an isolated wound. So let's say it's like one avulsion or something like that. Uh, and, and that's going to be really good for just stopping one single wound. And it's also good for use on yourself because you are not able to use an emergency trauma dressing on yourself. One other thing I want you guys to see while before we continue on this is that cyanosis indicator on his head. That's going to come into play when we start talking about airway. But I see that this guy has gone into a fatal amount of blood loss. So I want you guys to see what it looks like to feel a pulse when the guy is in cardiac arrest. So click on the guy's head, click on the examine patient tab, and then click on feel pulse again. You'll now see that it's just a white heart with no beating heart in the middle of it. That means that you are not feeling a pulse. All right, apologies, continuing on with the UI. The next is your medications tab. The really thing that the only thing you can do here is if you're clicked on their head, you can attempt to slap them awake. And if they're you click on any other body part, you can attempt to shake awake. That's gonna be the, the big thing you can do here. 
Uh, actually, that's only on the upper extremities, excuse me, for the attempt to shake awake, and then for the head is for attempt to slap awake. Fantastic. If you click on the head and you click on the airway management tab, which are next, is our next one over, you'll see that you have some options for airway management, the exact same ones that we had in CAP Medical, except for head tilt chin lift, which was used to be called hyperextending the head. Uh, but essentially, you can check the airway, perform head turning, check breathing, and then the head tilt chin lift. We're going to talk about that later when we actually talk about treatment. This is just an overview of the UI, so I'm not going to get too in-depth here. Uh, I'm sorry, one other thing on this. If you click on uh, airway management and you click on the chest, you'll see establish recovery position and inspect chest. Inspect chest is a much better way to tell if they're breathing and also the quality of that breathing than checking breathing, surprisingly. Um, so for this, yeah, you'll see no chest movement. That means the guy's not breathing. The established recovery position is going to be really good for leaving casualties in it. We're going to talk about that later when we get to airway management. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too deep into that. But if you go to advanced treatments, which is the next tab, you'll have the option to place the patient in a body bag if they are dead and you have a body bag. You can also, if you click on their chest, you can begin CPR. That's going to be key if your medic is asking you to do CPR on a patient. And just like in ACE and CAT, you have the option to drag, carry, or assist carry. Yeah, those are just going to be the ways that you can get a patient out of the area. Assist carry is just going to be like a quicker way of, of carrying the patient. Um, pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. Right, so this guy is obviously dead as hell. Um, so let's talk uh, quickly about our March algorithm, how we're going to do it, and what we would have done for this guy if we had gotten there <laughs> in time. So for this guy, remember our March algor uh, algorithm, our first M is going to be massive hemorrhage. So we want to stop the major bleeding. So for this guy, if I walk up to this patient and I see he's bleeding, I'm going to look for limb bleeding. I want to first consider tourniquets. And when I'm considering limbs, I always want to go for the limb that's bleeding the most first because I'm trying to stop the most amount of bleeding as soon as I can. And let's say that his, you know, his, let's say his left leg had 15 avulsions and his right arm had two avulsions, it'll take the, me the exact same amount of time to put a tourniquet on either limb, but it'll stop much more bleeding to tackle that left leg before I tackle that right arm. So I would click on this guy's left leg, I would click on bandages and fractures, and then I would apply a tourniquet. So Kloppa, if you go ahead and do that, that'd be great. And you now see that he has that little indicator there showing that he has a tourniquet on. I would then go to the right arm and do the same thing here. So, Kalapa, if you could slap a tourniquet on that right arm, please. Fantastic. And then for emergent casualties with more than one wound to his chest or torso, I'm just going to use an emergency trauma dressing. So click on this guy's head and toss on an emergency trauma dressing. These things are fantastic. I carry a whole lot of them. You will too. They're awesome. Great. So uh, this, guy, this guy has all of his bleeding stopped. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on his airway because that's our A in our March algorithm, right? So airway. So I'm clicking on this guy's head. I'm clicking on airway management, and I'm going to go ahead and check that airway. So go ahead and do that. So this one has a moderate collapse and obstruction. Now, collapse is something that wasn't really a thing in CAT medical. Uh, all collapse means is that they can't maintain their own airway, meaning you have to do it for them. Now, obstruction, unlike in CAT, there's no differentiation between obstructions and occlusions. If there is something in the airway, it's called an obstruction, whether it's liquid or solid. So for this guy, uh, we need to resolve that obstruction. So what we're going to do is perform head turning. So go ahead and do that, Kalapo. Yeah, so it says medical suction required, and that's not something you're going to carry. So that means that you need to get a rush on your medic over here because this guy's airway is not going to get better. Uh, but for now, we're going to put this guy in the recovery position because that's the best we can do for him. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to respirations. So we're going to inspect this guy's chest, uh, which will show us if we have any type of breathing. Now, notice when you inspected this guy's chest, you actually took him out of the recovery position. So because we still have a little bit more of an assessment to do, I'm not going to put him in the recovery position now. 
just because I'm going to have to do it again in about 10 seconds. So we have no chest movement. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this guy's head and we're going to feel for a pulse. So go ahead and do that Kalapo. And what you're going to see is that there is no beating heart in the middle. It's just a white heart with nothing beating. Now this would be uh, different from the Kalapo. If you turned and checked my pulse, you'll see a full beating heart in the middle of the, of the white heart. All right, once you've done that, let's turn back to this patient. Uh, so that's really our circulation for this guy, right? So this guy, he's lost a fatal amount of blood, which means that he is dead. And he also has no pulse and no breathing. So this guy's dead as hell, right? But we still have, we can still try to save him. This is not like cat where it's really hard to, to get people back. It's actually, you can get back some pretty severe casualties uh, in ACM with a with the solid medic, which we have. So for this guy, really the only option that you have is to start CPR until you can get a medic there. Now, if you're not in a position to work a cardiac arrest, don't do it, right? Remember, your first obligation is always to shoot back at whatever put this guy down. So you should always be shooting back. But if you do have the resources to care for this guy and you have a person you can dedicate to it, that person just start CPR until a medic can get there, and that is going to do this guy a whole lot of good. So, uh, the by the way, the H in March is hypothermia. Uh, that's not really something we have uh, in game. That's not a mechanic yet. I think that will be coming, but uh, it's obviously not a thing yet. Uh, so that's pretty much this casualty. Pretty straightforward. Just run through a quick march, and then what you're going to do after that is you're going to radio to your medic, and you're just going to say, hey, you know. Jack is down. He's got no breathing, no pulse. We're yeah, fatal amount of blood loss. We're starting CPR. Just give him an overview of, of what's going on, right? So that way the medic knows kind of what they're walking into. That's going to be this guy. Now let's do a casualty at a bit higher pace here. So we're going to spawn a different casualty. In cat, there was a little red dot in their upper chest to indicate that they had what's called a deep penetrating injury. And essentially what that means is that they required a chest seal. That is not the case for ACM. There is no little red dot indicator. If they have wounds to their chest that are penetrating, so think puncture wounds, uh, penetrating wounds, velocity wounds, avulsions, those can all cause pneumothoraxes and those can all, all cause sucking chest wounds, which require uh, chest seals. And this is very similar to how we do it in real life. We don't get a little indicator showing that they need a chest seal, right? They just have a wound on their chest and we have to evaluate whether or not it needs a chest seal. So the biggest thing here is that you should all, if, if your patient has wounds on their chest, you need to evaluate whether or not they need a chest seal. And how do you do that? Literally click on their chest, click on airway management. And then if there's an option to put a chest seal on, put a chest seal on. That's, that's always my best advice here. All right, so two things that uh, we didn't really cover in the video uh, so far that I think we should now. Uh, the first is going to be the mechanism of wrapping bandages. So in cat medical, you would do uh, sutures in the field, so basically sewing up injuries, which isn't realistic. A more realistic option is actually wrapping that wound with what is essentially an elastic wrap. So when you get your loadouts in game, you're going to see that there are elastic wrap uh, in there. How you guys use these is you're going to click on an arm that hasn't been wrapped yet. So I want you to click on this guy's left arm and you'll see that it has the 20 large avulsions, but it has a B next to it. That means that they have been bandaged. But if you click on this guy's chest, you'll see that he has 10 large avulsions and one large cut and it's a different color and has a W. That's because it has been wrapped. If you guys want to prevent wounds from reopening, you can wrap them. So let's click on this guy's left arm. You're going to click on bandages and fractures, and then you're going to click wrap bandaged wounds. So go ahead and do that. Fantastic. So after that's done, uh, by the way, you'll also have the option to wrap bruises. Don't do that. It's not helpful. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. And so that is the big thing I wanted to cover here. So yeah, make sure that if you are treating yourself and you don't want those wounds to, wounds to reopen, that you are wrapping them uh, in the field. All right. Thanks. So let's do, uh, let's do a relatively more critical patient here. Spawn this guy in. Let's walk over and let's run through our March algorithm. So we walk over to this guy. Great. So uh, first things first, massive hemorrhage. We need to stop the... Uh, most severe bleeding first. That's going to be this guy's left leg. So we're going to slap a tourniquet on that. Then we're going to go ahead and slap a tourniquet on this guy's arm. Next thing is next. Uh, we're going to move on to airway. So go ahead and click on this guy's airway and click check. Uh, click on this guy's head 
airway management, and then click check airway. Airway is clear, so we're going to move on to respiration. So click on this guy's chest, click on airway management, and then click on uh, inspect chest. Chest rise and fall observed. Great. Uh, that means that this guy is breathing perfectly normally. Next things next, uh, we're going to move on to checking a pulse. So click on this guy's head, click on examine patient, and feel for a pulse. Now you see that this guy has a red flashing heart, a beating heart. Uh, so that means that this guy does have a pulse. And so last things last, we're going to put this guy in the recovery position. So click on his torso, click on airway management, and click on establish recovery position. All right. So for this guy, I'm going to radio to my medic, and I'm just going to say, hey, Chad is down. He has a pulse, is breathing, and has lost a lot of blood. That's all you got to say. And then, boom, you're holding security for this guy. All right. Uh, that was a pretty quick one, pretty simple one. I want to get one with some chest wounds here, so that way we can actually get a little frisky with it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do an explosion patient. So we walk up to this guy, and I see that he's got wounds on his chest and both arms. We're going to start out with that red arm clop. Oh, do you still have tourniquets? So I'm going to slap tourniquets on both of this guy's arms first. And then Kalapo, uh, you are going to apply an emergency trauma dressing to this guy's chest to stop that bleeding. Because this guy has multiple wounds there and it's just not something I want to deal with. All right. So, boom, his chest is all bandaged. However, you see that this guy has av avulsions and that can mean that this guy might have some type of uh, chest injury, deep penetrating trauma. So, if you actually go to your airway management tab, you'll see that there's an option to apply a chest seal. So, go ahead and do that, Kalapo. Great. Now we're going to click on this guy's head and we're going to click uh, check airway because we've stopped all our bleeding. Great. Uh, airway is clear, so we're going to move on to respiration. So click on his chest and then inspect chest. Great. Chest rise and fall observed. Click on his head, click on examine patient, and then we're going to click on feel pulse. All right. Has a pulse. Fantastic. And then before we leave this guy, we're going to put him in the recovery position. And the reason we're doing that is because his airway may be clear now, but it can get messed up. So we need to put him in the recovery position to prevent his airway from getting messed up, which would stop his breathing and kill him very quickly. So we put him in the recovery position. We're going to message our, we're going to not message, we're going to radio our medic and we're going to say, hey, Jack is down. He is uh, unconscious. Uh, has a pulse, is breathing, and has lost some blood. Bleeding control marches complete. That's all I gotta say. Super simple. Uh, and really, that is that's what you know we're we're looking for out of you guys. That's all we need. The other things that the medic might ask for is he might ask you to do CPR on a patient, and that's just because uh, riflemen are really good at knowing when to start and stop CPR uh, when a medic tells them to. So for this guy, if you click on his chest, click on advanced treatments, and click begin CPR. Uh, just for the purposes of training, obviously this guy has a pulse, so we're you know not going to be doing that. But for the purpose of training, we're going to start CPR on this guy, and you actually see that there's options to pause and stop. Those are two different things. Your medic might ask you to pause compressions. That means that he wants you to stop for a second to see if this guy has a pulse. Or he might want you to stop compressions, which means you fully come out of the menu and you you know you would have to click all the buttons to get back into beginning CPR. Uh, really nifty trick that your medic might ask you to do. Um, and yeah, those are uh, really all the things. Last thing I wanted to cover here is kind of the different types of wounds that you can see on patients. Now in CAT and with ACE3 bandages, it was a big difference on what type of bandage you used because it would affect the effectiveness of the bandage differently, right? For CAT, uh, sorry, for ACM, you're really just going to be using that emergency trauma bandage for essentially all your chest and head wounds and then tourniquets for all your limb wounds. For yourself, you're just going to be using pressure bandages. The other thing I carry are packing bandages from ACE3 Medical, and I use those for velocity wounds. So any type of penetrating trauma, so penetrating wounds, velocity wounds, I use packing bandages for those just because they are so effective. So I carry a few of those, but mostly I carry emergency trauma dressings and pressure bandages, and those are going to be your, your best friends in this. That is everything I want to cover here. Again, just a broad overview of the biggest things I need you to do.
are shoot back, stop the bleeding, uh, assess the airway, assess breathing, assess circulation, uh, establish the recovery position, and radio to your medic. Those are the biggest things. All right, y'all. Well, again, I appreciate you guys sitting in on this training. This is going to make a big difference. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for our medics. It's going to challenge us a lot, but it's going to be a whole lot of fun switching over to this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, Whiskey, Kalapo, any of the other medics. They have good head heads on their shoulders, so they'll be able to talk you through it. And if they don't know, they can always refer to me. But yeah, again, thanks guys for, for hopping in for this little training, and I'm excited to see you guys in the op that we have coming up.